be moved. <laughs> so the question is, how well can you fit in a seven seat Model Y? Up here we do have the tallest of the family. Checking it out. Plenty of leg room. Mm. The uh, among the shortest of the family. Behind the passenger seat and behind the driver's seat. I should hope I fit. Tom, you got good leg room. Yeah, yeah, I do. What do we got over here? How much legroom do you have? It's enough. Enough? Way more than enough. Yeah. Way more than enough. And in the back, rounding out the the uh, secretary and uh, vice president of the Lollipop Guild. You want me to bring it back? Uh, yeah, sure. How are you guys doing back there? Uh, I actually fit fine. It's just getting in and out that's a little tricky, huh? Yeah. 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 I got a lot of like. Did yeah. you get your feet stuck? Oh, every time. <laughs> so that's not ideal. But the fact that we fit at all, the thing is though, if we were to go somewhere, would we fit with luggage? And I think the answer to that is a pretty resounding no. You don't think so? You don't think so? I, I think, think so. so. The only thing I actually keep up front is a pillow. So what we'll do is when we get home, maybe grab some empty bags, throw them in the car and see how they fit. <laughs> because that is quite a bit of room behind the third row, plus the frunk. Yeah. Um, it would be a lot less than we have in the van, that's sure uh but we would also uh <laughs> but it would be a lot more than that time uh, i told you guys we could only bring carry-ons <laughs> on a road trip and we had to weigh our luggage <laughs> and then we get to the airport and you're like wait a second uh, so far so good on the overnight test drive the model y long range seven seat and by the way uh overnight demos are apparently a thing I would tell you more about it right now, but I've got the air conditioning turned off, and I am getting toasty. It's hot. This is awesome. There we go. Better. Just trying to keep the volume down, the ambient noise down. An overnight test drive, a thing you might be able to do. Uh, and they've got a test drive mode now, which allows you to sample FSD beta while you're on your test drive. Not something I necessarily recommend because there is a learning curve to it. <laughs> Get a little windy in here, isn't it? And uh, and it is speed limited to 85, which if that's a problem on a test drive, you're doing it all wrong. Oh, thank you. Does that mean we have to go around? Yes. It's so much fun. This time we're doing a two, three, one configuration. With two in the front and three in the second row and one in the third row. And it's causing all kinds of confusion and fighting. Uh, he is, he's kind of a yeah. third row sort of gentleman. No, that's a shoot. I can't see bigger weight. I don't see it. Oh, wait. What? I yeah, I'm on the skate. How comfortable is everybody? My butt was on the Sweet. Still mighty. I'm not sure about anybody. In Max is comfortable, same as the last trip. Actually, <laughs> One of the most comfortable part about this one, yes. I'm not holding that pizza. <laughs> Someone else's. So we just drove about, oh, hour and a half, two hours uh, on the overnight loaner of the seven seat Model Y to determine, does it fit? Do we fit in a car this size? And uh, we've done the seating two ways. We've done with two in the third row. We've done with one in the third row and three in the second row. In all cases, we did two in the front row because I'm not a chauffeur. I'm uh, just a person driving a car. And uh, to my absolute shock and surprise, the answer to do we fit appears to be we do fit. So that's kind of a big question, big question. The next part was, do we, uh, do we like it? The sound is great, of course. The ride is great. It's plenty quiet, no matter what other people tell you. It's much quieter than other cars. And a lot of the road noise if you turn the AC off, all the air off, and the radio off, yeah, there's road noise. That's the sort of thing that's normally drowned out by having a, a motor humming, whirring in the background, creating a, a bit of white noise. You don't have that white noise, you just have regular road noise. So, is it is it a good car? Yeah, of course it is. I, am I getting the expected range? Yeah, I appear to be, but what, uh, but what else? What other frustrations? I've driven quite a few hours with these before. 
and I have a very strong um, expectation of what the uh, FSD is going to do. The FSD beta is on this uh, test model and still it drives me absolutely batty because the amount of pressure required on the wheel is almost exactly equal to the amount that is enough to kick it out of uh, self-driving. I just tried keeping my hands on the wheel. It didn't work great. I tried using the, the, the little shuttle wheels. Either of the wheels, up or down, counts as uh, defeating the wheel nag because you are clearly touching the wheel. You're clearly touching the wheel. And at one point it even kicked us all the way out of self-driving without warning and said, look, it, it appears you're just not paying attention and nothing could be further from the truth. Not only am I paying attention, everyone in the car is paying attention. It's exasperating. And it says, you know, if you do this one more time, FSD will be disabled. If I'm gonna pay 15 grand for something and it's gonna be disabled while I'm paying attention, the nags are too much, fix them. I would 100% not pay for FSD on its current nag configuration because I'm just not confident that there's any amount of human attention that would prevent me from getting kicked out of it. But so far, it appears to be something that you could fit at least my lollipop guild into with reasonable comfort. It's quite comfortable and it's so much smaller than the minivan. So later, maybe in the morning, we're gonna do a luggage test to see how luggage fits in addition to people. But for right now, we're just gonna go out and drive around some more, get some more impressions of the vehicle. Okay, so it is the next morning. Good morning, everybody. And we are returning the vehicle to Tesla as required, as requested. Uh, and we're only gonna be about 12 minutes behind schedule uh, because we had to get coffee. Because I didn't sleep well. Uh, I asked the gang their thoughts and, and they just said, we like it. Uh, we told Max that uh, it would make uh, paying the mortgage difficult, and he said, who cares? Let's live in the car. Uh, but I think his tune would change if he tried to live in a car with six, with five people and three dogs and a couple of guinea pigs. So, well, my thoughts are some of the autonomous features are just, boy, they are, they are real bad. Some of them were real bad. Getting on the highway just now, it was in full self-driving and it came to the yield sign and cranked on the brakes all the way. And there was cars behind us that uh, would have piled into us if I hadn't fucking <laughs> juiced it. So that's that's not ready for prime time. And uh, 15000 is a big ask for a, for a, for a feature set that really wants to kick you out all the time. This is too much. That's uh, that's like about what we paid for the minivan five years ago. Five years ago. And uh, by the way, the minivan is still worth over 10. So we've only lost 5,000 on the minivan over the course of driving it 50,000 miles. So that's... That's good. That's good. That's 10 cents a mile. Repair costs on it would bump it up to probably 12 to 13 cents a mile. Uh, yeah, so that's good. Um, yeah, so the what are the thoughts on it? Can I buy one? And the answer is uh, no. No, I can't. I can't because uh, we, I mean, looking at the numbers a few different ways, zero down. You're talking like nine hundred to a thousand dollars a month. That's that's too much. That's too much. Uh, Ten thousand. You know, just do the trade in, but no, but no down payment. Well, that that gets you into like the seven seven fifty range, probably closer to eight hundred range. That's still too much. That's still too much. I am I am not a rich man. Uh, and it was like, well, if you did a trade in and you did thirty thousand down. Then, then the payment's reasonable. It's like 400 bucks. I I don't have I don't have 30,000 to put down. And if I did, wouldn't I be better served buying 30,000 worth of Tesla shares? I think. I mean, couldn't that get me a free a free Tesla at some point? 
<laughs> but when I first put money in Tesla, I would track to see how it was doing, to see would I be able to buy a Tesla? That was my first hope was that I could get a Tesla just from, now it's in my IRA, I can't, it's all numbers. Could I get one? And the answer was uh, eventually yes. And then, then the question was, could I get one just on the games? Oh, that'd be, and of course the answer is yes. And then it was, well, could I pay off my house? <laughs> and eventually the answer was yes. Very cool all, all around. This is just um, not, this is a very cool toy that is just not in my budget. Not in my budget, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, we'll see what the next year brings. And I do get asked all the time at these events, what do you drive? You know, it's like, well, Brian, I think in your math, you're not figuring in the federal income tax credit. I don't qualify for the federal income tax credit because I don't pay enough, uh, I don't make enough money to pay enough taxes to actually get it. That, that credit is not for everyone. State of Washington has, has, has a tax credit where you don't pay sales tax on a new EV if it's under 45,000. This is not under 45,000 just yet. My gosh, if it was, wow, that, that would save me, you know, thousands of dollars, but uh, it's not. So uh, you get nothing. Which is, yeah, so I would get, and again, a lot of places have local incentives that make it even more affordable. But no, in Washington, uh, you you pay extra on your tabs. There's a extra, <laughs> extra pay you pay because you're not paying for gas tax. And, um, and you pay full price and you get no credit. So uh, I would be paying, you know, 15 to, Twenty thousand dollars more than who, than some buyers in some states. Uh, so yeah, it's not in budget for me. I'm gonna go ahead and change lanes here. Am I? Okay, I guess I am. There we go. So yeah, it is not in budget for me. Uh, hope this was helpful. <laughs> it was great. We fit. The conclusion is we fit. The sound is great. It's pretty cool. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned, stay juicy. Uh, can't wait to hear from you clever robots. Maybe when I have one of these of my own, which is not after today.